Hey you guys, welcome back to Heartway Farms. Today we just wanted to take a few minutes of our time and sit down and chat with you guys and share our heart on why we are prepping food and toiletries and paper products and just talk about it. Sure. All right, so we've had some people ask why prep? Why collect items? Why stock up? Why enter into this lifestyle or thought process? And we were actually just talking about this morning here is like how do you how do you prep with the right mentality and how do you um, approach those things from uh, especially I think the, the the father side or the dad side of things husband the husband side yeah the manly side of things <laughs> um, and it was just kind of a discussion that we went through is you know as far as like you know how do you do it the right way and how do you have the right mentality going into it and why are we doing it and um, just all these things that are surrounding it and so let's give some background real quick first sure. and then we'll go into it but you know we uh, we pr have been on our family farm for four years going on four five, and a half, yeah, five yeah. Um, and one of one of the reasons we wanted a farm and we had been looking and praying for a long time yeah over 12 years for a property yeah. and we saw many but one of the goals of being on a homestead or on a farm was to be able to grow our own food, to raise good quality meat and uh, fruit and vegetables. Have space. Have space. <laughs> but this idea of prepping, that's the word we use, but really stocking your pantry and having food that you grew that um, you know where it came from, you know what's added and what is not added, having that option is something that we do anyway. And so, um, for some background, that's we have been doing this. And I would say just particularly <laughs> this year and last year, um, due to the current things that are going on in society, um, right now we're in 2021, just for those who are viewing this later, um, for those things that are going on in society, we have been more intentional right last year and this year is that a good way to put it i do and i think that um and we might get into it a little bit more but i think that there is seasons in our life that we maybe are a little more intentional about it or that you you know sometimes guys guys uh fathers dads know this is that sometimes their their wives become more nesty and they, uh, He's they, looking at me. <laughs> they have this desire um, to prepare for um, activities or uh, children that are on the way. Um, and then sometimes it's, it's, it's the Which other side. Which is not why we're having that video right no, now. Just for not. the record. <laughs> but there's, there's, there's definitely seasons. There's, there's different reasons, I think, even in our own family structure, our own needs and necessities. And um, even just the climate of the, of the family, you know, is... You know, we, we, we prepare financially in a lot of ways. You prepare spiritually in different ways. Um, life is very cyclical and seasonal, and there are definitely different times when the preparing or the the desire or vision for, for preparing is maybe a little more heightened um, than in other seasons. And I don't know if that's necessarily always, you know, good that you have the, the ebb and flows to it, but it, it creates a natural... I don't know, maybe cycle the things, so. Well, and um, so not even considering um, significant world situations, mm -hmm. um, we have, as a society, we have become very um, dependent upon the food chain system, supply, chain, <laughs> supply yeah. chain system. And we saw last year in 2020 how quickly and easily, easily that can be interrupted, and right. overnight it can become uh, interrupted, and that can spur you on to some action steps mm -hmm. to be like, okay, well, here's the deal. I've got, you know, I do the the meal planning, the grocery shopping, um, you know, all of that stuff mostly mm -hmm. uh, between me and my big girls, and so that responsibility kind of rests on my shoulders, and I want to make sure. That if um, 
and this is even previously, but I want to make sure that I have food, good quality food for my family if I, if something comes up, if a tor you know, a storm or a tornado or power went out or whatever, that there is food for my family. Right. I'm not even talking about like huge, you know, catastrophes that cause months and months and months of challenge that could happen. Right. But uh, that's not even what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about using wisdom and being uh, prepared and putting away food and having a plan. As a family unit, I look to Josh for um, guidance, you know, in these things. And if, you know, if he says to me, hey, Annie, because <laughs> um, he doesn't do this a lot, but hey, I feel like you should go, go ahead and get some of the staples and make sure we've got enough of it, then I'm going to listen to that because he is, you know, I, the Lord uses him as the head of this, this household and we're a team doing this together, but I, you know, the Lord is using him to, you know, be a sounding board in these things mm -hmm. and people he has in his own life, you know, for a sounding board. We don't stack and prep out of fear. I've said this before and it's not out of fear and people, okay, people will make fun of you. Um, for stocking up. People won't understand why you're stocking up. They will label you as a hoarder, a hoarder as a crazy person. Right. Um, and there are those people mm. <laughs> out there. Okay. I have met them. Um, you might be watching. <laughs> you might be watching this right now. We still love you. We appreciate you. That's why you're watching our channel right now. But most people are not that. And right. most people feel... I was just talking to somebody the other day. I was talking to my sister-in-law. And you feel a weight. Um, not anxiousness. Not a burden. But you feel sometimes... Responsibility. A responsibility. Yeah. A weight. To make sure that you're ready in situations that might come up. And, um, and in a lot of ways, it's no different than someone who's going through college and preparing for a test or someone who's preparing for a job interview or someone who's wanting to buy a home. You know, they're, they're going to take the seasons ahead of those, those situations and they're going to prepare for it. And, you know, you can even look at examples through history or through uh, biblical examples is that there's been different seasons when there was instruction or there was a, a, uh, a need for a, a preparation to take place or a stocking up um, to weather a season ahead. I saw a funny, um, it was kind of funny, I guess. I saw something on social media the other day, I think it was a meme of some kind, and it was talking about, um, you know, Noah. And, um, you know, if you stock like Noah, people are think you're crazy and they'll make funny and mock you. And anyway, that's the gist of it. Yeah. But someone made a comment under there and I thought it was very good because we use that, you know, there are examples in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Joseph, seven years. Seven years. I mean, my goodness, I'm prep I'm stockpiling for a year, you know, but um, seven years uh, he was told to prepare. But it was one of the comments on this Noah meme was um, just make sure you hear the Lord and take his guidance. And I know some of you don't have, don't walk in the same faith that we walk in. And you have to work that out for yourself and hear what you are hearing. Right. But for us, it's it's a foundation of who we are. And so when we feel that tug. Um, or we're just paying attention. Or you're in, paying in attention ways, you know? to the climate, which is just right. being shrewd, using wisdom and all of these things. But right. hear that guidance and, and feel that nudge, that weight that you feel and act on it. Sometimes like, you know, even if you're just with everything that's going on in Afghanistan right now, you feel the weight to pray for those people right. and to fast Talk for those people. Talk about current events. It's like been a constant cycle of current events going on like the it last. It has. <laughs> so seriously, guys. The, yeah. things that, the things that are happening in other places of the world should shake us up a little bit to be wise. Right. That's not to be fearful. First of all, it should, it should push us to pray and right. to get our ducks in, in a row. <laughs> but it should also cause us to be wise. And um, with current legislation that is on the table to be passed, with the things they're trying to do in the school systems, and I'm not going to say Just all the things. In general. Yeah. yeah, because yeah. you guys know. And it's we'll across get... the board. Yeah, it is. you guys know. You know, hold on. Without going too far off, though, this is another thing. Is because, you know, we've talked about this as a family. We've talked about this as a, as a local fellowship. Is even those of different faiths, um, this is where I think that we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Is that, and we've taken this away, is 
you know, there's there might be not different different areas that we don't necessarily see eye to eye on, um, but you try to see the areas that they do something very well. It's all to do with prepping, though. It's not just uh, the crazy Christians or the crazy preppers. There's there's a lot of people in a lot of cultures um, that prepare very well. So you can utilize and you can observe and um, we've actually, like I said, we've actually used the resources of other religious these, groups yes. or other ethnic groups of right. people that we have come in contact with anyway. So what are some of the benefits of, of, of prepping that we've found? Having food in your house and not having to go to the store. <laughs> like that's like my favorite, favorite thing. Um, I don't enjoy shopping. Um, I don't even really enjoy meal planning very much. It's not, it's probably my least favorite, um, household job, mom job that I have. But when you have all these different things in your house, you can usually throw together something, which is nice. Um, even if it's last minute or if you're in a hurry or whatever. So I like not having to go to the store. Um, I think it's added, often. I think it's added a level of security. Yeah. Of just the knowledge that you're not you're not being reactive to uh, life situations, whether it be a short term or a long term situation. That you've been proactive. You, you've you've once again you've been wise and and you've utilized your time to truly prepare those things. So whether it be a financial situation that you come into, um, so as a family, I would say that that it's maybe even for the kids. I mean. I, I don't know that we've talked to this at length, but there's the there's big a kids are a part of it. all of yeah. it. They're fully aware of kind They're of involved. current life events and yeah. uh, you know the what's going on in the world. And yeah, there's I think there's a security to that. And like Josh mentioned, um, you know whether you're having a baby or suddenly you lose your job or suddenly something comes up. I mean, we're not even talking about like crazy stuff we're just yeah. talking about real life stuff that comes up you know um a family member gets ill and you have to take care of them it is it just takes your time or yeah. another family that comes into a need and you can help provide for that family you can share the resources that you have we don't have to be afraid of sharing what we have so all of these things are the benefits of putting food away there were a few times when i went to the store at the beginning the grocery store at the beginning of 2020 and like I said, you guys can read between the lines here. And I saw people behaving badly. Yeah. <laughs> they were upset. They were yelling. Selfish. They were being very selfish right. and reacting with one another. I saw arguing and fighting. Um, now, this wasn't every time. This was sporadic. I saw um, I had a family member um, who had her children in the store get yelled at yeah. by a gentleman. Yeah. And very quickly, you realize when sometimes this stuff comes up, you maybe just don't want to go to the store <laughs> as right. often. And you certainly don't maybe don't want to take your children to the store. Um, and you just have to be aware of these things. And so having options are good because mm -hmm. you'd be like, actually, I don't really need to go. I can make this work or I have this, you know, ready just in case, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I think that this is a practice that anyone could adopt. And you just start slow. Um, you guys remember we did a, um, I did a sit down talk video with Marie and Julianne. We can probably link that here if you haven't seen it yet. And just how to wrap your mind around beginning this process of prepping. Now listen, I'm using that word, but this is, this is, I, I'm not just prepping for, for some kind of crazy thing. I'm going to do it consistently. This is something that I continue, we have been doing continue to build yeah. up and you use, and then you continue to build up and you use, you know, and so it's, it's this process that you keep going through and, um, how to wrap your mind around it and how to meal plan. And that's how I prepare. Like I, I make a list of different meals and then I prepare those items. I don't just fill my pantry full of tuna because for yeah. goodness sake, you're going to be tired of tuna. Right. You know, or rice and beans. That's what I talked about in the other video. So you, you're talking about how not to be a crazy prepper. <laughs> well, <right? laughs> so yeah, but no, it's uh, there. There is. You're gonna there, get tired of all that food. There's, <laughs> there's some intentionality. Yeah. There is some planning, and I think that's where having multiple of the family member involved. It's not, you know, there's not just a dad who's walking around afraid. There's not just a mom who's the mama bear who's, 
who's storing things up and nesting. It's it is a group it is a group effort and there's there's things that we bounce off each other and once again we had quite a few comments from the previous videos about you know what's what's the man's role in this or what's the guy's role in this and you know in our situation I happen to be the one who does a lot of the physical work a not lot. that they don't do the physical work because they are doing a lot of physical work I mean but and then and then the primary breadwinner for the some of the financial aspect of you work off the farm doing yes. you have a full-time job so we do we do a few different things um that make this possible which you know once again we have six kids and with the farm activities and and other things going on so that's just life for us um but but it is there there is a there's a intentionality to it there is a, a sounding board back and forth that takes place and it's not just one person running away with it and going crazy with it so i don't think it's a good idea to just um you have to walk that line of being prepared you know you don't want to just bury your head in the sand and just say oh everything's going to get better oh everything's going to you know the lord will provide provide for me and he absolutely will but, but he if also he's, gives instructions if he's calling you to yeah. action steps or if you're feeling that tug for action steps um you should probably listen. <laughs> right. Usually it's like, uh, usually there's a call to action, you know, of some kind. And um, I want to touch base on, touch on something too, on um, not only prepping things and food and stuff, but being prepared uh, with some life skills. And, you know, a lot of the videos we're trying to put on here are truly things we are just doing on a regular basis, day in and day out. They're skills that either the girls uh, my kids are learning or i'm learning or josh is learning people. yeah and we test out those skills and then usually put up a video about it once we kind of tested it out and um so some of these skills are are good it's a little funny okay so julianne likes to go out to um we have an old brick fireplace outside that was here for however many years it was yeah. here for before we bought it and she likes to occasionally cook on it um, just to see if she can on a fire, you know, with a, with a grate, a metal grate over the top. And it's just kind of fun, but she's like, Hey, at least I know how to do it. And the kids go camping and stuff. So they know how to cook on a fire, but it's just one of those things. If you lose electricity and you can't, you know, if you got an electric stove or whatever, and you can't cook inside, then you know, it doesn't scare you and be like, I have never done this before. Right. You know, you, you know how to do it. If you had to make your own soap, you know, you can watch videos. We have a video or other people have videos out there on how to make your uh, soap from scratch, you know, but you can't do these things if you don't have the, the skills and the knowledge and if you don't have the ingredients or the products to do that certain skill. Right. Um, so it's just something else to consider. And you're going to make mistakes. You're going you're gonna to make purchases that you were like, ooh, that didn't work out so well. Um, but that's part of the process too. Yeah. Like have fun with it. Um, learn from, learn, learn from, from it. it. Don't make it something that is a, an oppressive activity, you know, around the house. It, it's, it's a busy time. You know, we have, you know, it goes back to principles of reaping or sowing and reaping, you know, that there is, it's the prepping season. Once again, it goes back to it's seasonal is when certain items are in stock. You're able to prep up on or them. your when garden too. When your garden is popping with yeah. stuff like when you're, when your high tunnel finally gets installed, <laughs> you know, you might have a, a harvest going on there. So. Like I said, not to belabor the conversation at all, but it's there's there's a process to this, and you don't just wake up overnight and start prepping and you know look or for, get it done in look a day. For every uh, every uh, you know crazy TV show out there that gives a a, a prepping score of how well you're doing, <laughs> um, you know li life will usually be it's 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 a great equalizer in that of you know where I made mistakes at and where we went right and we're in wrong yeah. so and I think when it comes down to it if you know you, you just if your only reason is this if I can't go into the store for a while do I have what I need right enough and you don't need everything believe me you can live way more simply than um, than people think you can right um, and, and but and that like yeah. I said I went over those different scenarios but like uh, just keeping it real if I can't go into the store for a while do I have enough to build myself build build in some time if I need to figure out other options right. and that's kind of how I'm approaching it right and now you, and you touched on it as well is you know don't forget 
the the other things that go along with the prepping and i know it's not it's usually not overlooked by people but just to reiterate is you know there's the physical preparation you know is your is your body able to do these things there's the mental preparation is are we learning life skills are we are we do we have resources you know do you have entertainment you know is there yeah there i bought books games i bought games. games for the kids too um, i should i should talk about that because sometime. there you know there's that aspect of it and then you know, if you're if you're of the mindset, there's the spiritual aspect of the mental aspect of of making sure that you're that you're spending that time to to hear or prepare. However, you know you would do that. Yeah. Uh, there's the community side of it. We you know we've we've said this uh, many times on our on our on our channel is you know we don't prep or we don't farm and homestead to be self reliant. Um, I, I think that that's further from the truth. The whole the whole idea of well we're gonna be self reliant. I, I think that that would last for all of maybe a week and a half, and then you'd be like, I need such this from so and so, or I, I we ran out of this already. You cannot <laughs> grow everything yourself. You cannot do everything yourself. You will drop dead so quick. Yeah. It's hard work. Well, like, and on a greater and on a greater aspect of it, we we are not meant to be alone. To be alone. To not be not only as a family. Um, but as a community, you know, we are meant to interact together. So whether that be your immediate actual living community, that's one of your communities. Your spiritual community, community is another community and, and so on and so forth. Your family. Um, and so, for those th yeah. for those of you who don't know us or you're just finding our channel, um, just some quick background. We uh, own and operate a family farm and um, we we do this for ourselves but like you're talking about we offer it to the community we actually have a farm shop here on site that we offer um milk and uh whole chicken lamb honey we're starting to ship jam. products i know yeah. we actually just we, you guys have requested it so many times yeah. jonathan i'm talking to you if you see uh -huh. this uh, no, many people have requested so many, so many times t for us to ship, to begin shipping, and we just upgraded our website to do that. So, shameless plug, heartwayfarms.com, go check it out. But, back to the subject at hand, we offer these things to, to the community, and so when we're raising chickens, we don't just raise 100 chickens for our family, right. we raise you know 200 chickens or whatever fill in the blank um for your family yeah. yeah you know and the same things like if if it's something that we love we know other people will love it as well and so we want to offer it here to the community and build that community and like marie you know her her egg business here she she gets we use them obviously every day but she can sell that to the to the local community to hopefully be like a team effort. So for you guys, you might not have a farm. You might be living in a city apartment and that is okay. I mean, you might have to be strategic about where Storage you put space, stuff, yeah. but find your connections, you know, start finding and building a community where you can find the resources that you want. Find those farms, yeah. find those people that, you know, are doing kind of what we're doing, but find them in your area right. and, uh, and make a connection, make a friendship, you know, get to know these people and you have to be steady. Yeah. Um, not that you can't have those moments, but like, you know, we're carrying the weight of our six kids. Like I can't be, I can't be a wreck for them. You guys, you right. have to be steady. And, um, thankfully we can talk openly with our older children. Right about kind of current things that are happening and have real talks and and not instill fear in them um and to train the children to train yeah. them on yeah. how to be diligent and how to be prepared and how to be wise and how to learn these skills so that when they are running a household right. they can do these things you know they are participating they know how to work hard they know how to plan and do these things and, and have things in order so that when a challenge comes because i guarantee a challenge is going to come Correct. that is a scriptural principle um when the rain falls <laughs> it falls on both yeah. right yeah. so um this is going to happen and so if we know and we are guaranteed challenge and right. things are going to happen why not be ready to the best of our ability and we always lean on christ in all things um on the lord for all things um in the end um i wanted to say i know many of you i already said this but many of you are new to the hartway farms family welcome we appreciate you 
we do not only talk about prepping here and and uh, stockpiling and stuff like that but we hope you stick around like I said we are a family of eight living in Illinois um, working and managing and growing our farm and our homestead um, we love like there's a, there's a lot more how to there's a lot coming, more yeah. how to yeah. you know we're learning new skills and so we'll share them with you guys once we make sure that we know how to do them properly um, and just we're just trying to share a life that's why we started um, our YouTube channel and that's why we put out this information is just because we want to share our life share the real life of what it looks like on a farm with a family homeschooling living life all of these things I mean this is this is why we are here and what we're doing so we hope that you stick around um, please consider hitting that subscribe button if you're just finding us and yeah being a part see the horse <laughs> running by in the background <laughs> we have horses so anyway we hope you stick around and hit that subscribe button and join us for this journey here mm -hmm.